uh, and such a great honor for the university and, uh, and for all of us to be able to do anything to learn. I had the opportunity to uh, meet uh, the ambassador now for several occasions in different venue avenues. It could be at the UN, could be uh, uh, primarily in New York. That's what we have run into each other. And he's always had expressed an interest in coming to Utah Valley University and to speak with our to speak for our community. So it's, uh, it's a great honor to to have um, <coughs> the ambassador and government representative of the UN for the United Nations, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Mr. Milos um, um, Bukas Bukasinovic. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this uh, uh, Bosnian names, which are uh, difficult for me, but uh, we, we'll, we'll move in that direction. Before I introduce the, um, the ambassador, um, I would like to um, make a couple announcements. Uh, right after this uh, lecture um, at 11.30 at the Fulton Library, <coughs> we're having a, a celebration for International Women's Day. Uh, we'll have a, a major panel discussion. I don't know if you have seen these uh, posters around campus, and I hope you take advantage and participate. Let me tell you, we have brought uh, uh, four incredible panelists. Um, to um, dialogue and to converse on the topic of uh, the UN theme, uh, the UN women's theme for this year, which is Time is Now, Rural and Urban Activists Transforming, Transforming Women's Lives. So uh, we have, um, uh, the panelists are made out of uh, Madame Gail Binley-Taylor, and uh, just for your information, she, I know she's meeting right now with some groups, but she also came from New York. Uh, for, uh, to be part of this panel. And then on Thursday, she will be lecturing here at the university as well. Um, Madame Bentley Taylor, uh, she's a former uh, senior uh, information officer of the United Nations, uh, part of the DPI, and a high rank profile as being a, an officer of the UN, and I think it would be wonderful. She's uh, originally from Trinidad, Tobago, and she has been involved in, in broadcasting for many years, so she's a wonderful and delightful speaker. You, you love having heard today at the panel, as well as uh, Mr. Ambassador Milos Sonovic. Uh, he will participate at, uh, as a panelist. Uh, and also we have two uh, individuals from our own community, uh, Selena Meinler, uh, she was a former legislature, uh, Hispanic activist. Uh, she will join us at, um, at the panel, and as well as Shirley Silversmith, um, Maybe that name sounds familiar, but she's the uh, director of the Utah Division of Indian Affairs for the state of Utah. So we'll have the representation from the Native American groups, from the Hispanic group, from the United Nations perspective, and a former ambassador that actually had to deal quite a bit with, uh, especially after the uh, now 20 years since the war uh, in, in Bosnia, yeah. and uh, dedicated <coughs> to uh, transforming women's <coughs> lives. Um, another. Um, Announcement and just briefly uh, is a major event on Monday. Uh, I don't know how else to announce this event. I've, I've been announcing it now for two months, and I still I hope I hope you see it all over campus and through the media and uh, through press releases and uh, digital marketing that we have done. Please come and join us. Uh, there's more spaces on the back, folks. It is such a, an incredible treat what we're doing here at this university, Utah Valley University. No other university can compete with what we are coming and doing. Monday the 12th, starting at 8.30 all the way till one o'clock, we'll be having a diplomatic conference representing 14 nations, 14 nations, diplomats, ambassadors, consul generals, commercial trade, uh, trade commissioners, will be coming and joining us for an open discussion on international trade relations and network. Um, the Lieutenant Governor will be uh, the keynote speaker in the plenary session, as well as um, Mayor uh, Jack Muskovsky from Salt Lake talking about sustainability, the President of the World Trade Center talking about uh, free trade, Mr. Derek Miller, the President of Silicon Slopes, Mr. Clint Bitts, talking about innovation and technology, and from the Governor's Office of, of Energy, Madam. Um, Megan Stetler representing the, the energy sector for the state. Folks, this is a free event, open to the public, directed to our students, to our community, to our business leader. What a great venue to be able to, to mingle with these people. So without further ado, because I, this is an event reserved for our wonderful 
friend from the from the Balkans, from, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I, I just, um, I, as I mentioned, I've been able to work with uh, with Mr. Ambassador with, with Kasinovi for the past, um, I would say, year and a half. And what a wonderful soul he is! Believe me, what a wonderful gentleman he is! And just to give you a just a, a brief introduction on him. Um, he presented his credentials to the UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon um, a few um, two and a half years ago when he was asked to, to serve in that capacity. And prior to his appointment, uh, Mr. Ambassador served as Minister Counselor in the Division of the United Nations and other international organizations in his country, Ministry of Foreign Affairs primarily. Um, he was also a Deputy Permanent Representative to the UN and having served as Minister Counselor in his country mission to the European Union as head of the Division of North and South America, Australia and Oceania as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, in his country, he also served as permanent representative um, for the office of the UN. And, uh, and also, he's, um, he was the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs for bilateral relations, also being the head division of the Peace and Security of the Foreign Affairs and Chief of the Cabinet of the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Bogosanovic uh, uh, was also an advisor to the Minister of Justice uh, for the government of the Republic of Spraska from 1996 to 97. Um, he has been involved all of his life. I remember yesterday having uh, lunch with him and said, you know, all that I know is I've been in the government. So that's, uh, that's what I know and uh, I'm excited for this uh, post that I have. I also want you to know that uh, he is accompanied by his first secretary, uh, the permanent mission, um, Madame Lilian Grig Stajanovic. I, I think I, I, I kill your name, I apologize. Absolutely. Lilia is one of my, we have become great friends in, in negotiating and we're honored to have <coughs> you as well and, uh, and to welcome you to Utah Valley University. So without further ado, Mr. Ambassador, welcome to UVU. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. At the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Professor uh, Lago for this invitation and for giving me opportunity to speak about foreign policy of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the UN. Uh, although Mr. Professor Lago introduced myself and said everything about me, and I understand that I am older, <laughs> if you have more items in the career, it's not so much good as it looks like. I just would like to add to it that I, before the war, I was a lawyer, and I wasn't dream that I could be diplomat, but the wind of war push people in different ways. And so after the Dayton Peace Accords, I joined the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and working in the diplomatic service for 20 years. And uh, I uh, decided to deal with the multilateral issue, thinking that this issue is closer to the lawyer. And in my ministry, uh, the bilateral issue is closer to the economic economics and in bilateral post most of bilateral posts in Bosnia are dealing with the economical uh, cooperation. I'm very pleased that in the United States there is still interest for the for the events in Bosnia and especially in the uh, in the acad academic community. Uh, and uh, you know, I think many heard about uh, the Dayton Peace Agreement, which was concluded and end the war in Bosnia in 1995. And this agreement was, was succeed because of the strength and diplomatic efforts of the United States. And the war in Bosnia was so terrible and the division between the party in Bosnia was so wide and it was Many think it was impossible to find uh, any solution or way, but Ambassador Holbrook and his team and all U.S. Uh, 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 diplomacy engage and succeed in concluding the peace and concluding peace agreement. And we understand that peace agreement for Bosnia uh, represent uh, one of the not small achievement of the U.S. foreign policy. It is very positive things of the U.S. foreign policy. Uh, before I would start to speak about Bosnia, I would say only 
two preliminary remarks, not speaking too much of the history, culture, everything you could find at the internet, and uh, there is a ma many sources which is explained very well. I would point out only first things that Bosnia and Herzegovina in the modern history was always part of some greater empire, which was multi-ethnic empire. We were part of the Ot Ottoman Empire, we were part of the Austria-Hungarian Empire, we were part of the former Yugoslavia, which was not empire, but which was uh, strong, which was uh, real uh, multi-ethnic state. And my second uh, remarks is that Bosnia is not a specific country, but it's not a country like many of the European of the European country. In Europe, you have the principle one nation, one state. But in Bosnia, we have one state and three nations. And in the modern history in Bosnia, we never have situation that any of, of, of the three nations was, which represent three uh, uh, religious, was majority. And so, we, uh, it is a reflect of the of the decision-making process of the country and the constitutional structure. And Dayton Peace Accord, Accord provide a complex constitutional structure, and we have a little bit slow process of decision-making, but we understand that this uh, complex process providing a uh, legitimacy, which is not easy uh, to provide in multi-ethnic and complex states and which provide a uh, feeling of the ownership of the states for all, all other components. And uh, also in the UN, we have recognized experience that democracy and rule of law is possible to build in the country with the complex constitutional environment. I will divide my presentation in two parts. One part is uh, to tell several observations about implementation of the peace accord and other part, in other part I will tell you about uh, our activity in the UN. Dayton Peace Accord which concludes in 21st of November 1995 represent new type of the peace agreement. You could find in the literature many things ab about this about this agreement, but uh, in, the, in compare with previous agreement or others agreement which conclude after, there are many, many differences. For example, in P Dayton Peace Accord, constitution is part of peace agreement. <coughs> and it's not only in Bosnia, but in some country, peace agreement provide constitutional framework and some peace agreement is direct constitution, every letter in Bosnia is constitution is part of our agreement and our constitution providing direct application for the main instrument of human rights. European Con uh, Convention of Human Rights and other convention are di directly applicable by the constitution without it's not necessary any law to provide this application. Uh, Implementation of the Dayton uh, is divided in two parts, much, mo much more than in other agreement. It is strictly divided military implementation and civilian implementation. In the military, in the civilian implementation, the leading authority is high, repre high representative, which is stipulated in the peace agreement. A main authority for the uh, for the military implementation is the, is the he head of the military mission. And in the first year after concluding of the peace agreement, military part implemented much more quickly that civilian part, it was paradoxically that military men who were, were bitter enemy much more agree, much, e much easier than, than the politician. And we relatively soon <laughs> Uh, uh, implement the military part of the agreement. Uh, that agreement is based on the best practice of several organizations. Uh, it is based on the best practice, first of all, 
of the, sec of the OSCE, Organization of, Secur of uh, Cooperation, uh, Security Cooperation in Europe. And military part of the agreement is divided into two parts, 1A, 1B. 1B is uh, regional stabilization. And in the regional stabilization is long-term strategy for security. Uh, uh, many achievement of OSC is direct implemented in that agreement. And uh, agreement identify free area of stability with the idea to confirm, convert in the area of stability. First area of instability in East Bosnia and Herzegovina itself. And agreement uh, uh, stipulate the so-called agree, uh, agreement under two between the party in Bosnia. This agreement is practically the same as the Vienna Agreement of Confidence and Security Confidence Building Measure. And it was the time when in Bosnia was free army. After that, we have a reform of the defense, and that that's, uh, agreement is not relevant. Second area of instability is the Bosnia with the neighboring state, with the Croatia, Serbia, and Bosnia. And agreement uh, provide uh, uh, a special agreement of the arms control, which limits uh, the five category of the major weapons of each of these three countries. This agreement is practically very similar, it's not the same like agreement of conventional forces of Europe, which was concluded in 1990 under auspicious of the OSCE. Regional Annex 1B provide also some agreement on the wider area of former Yugoslavia. It was agreement under five, but it was failed because the idea was that only two countries remained out of the control of the conventional weapons, it was Albania and Slovenia. Only th those two countries have not any legal obligation to limit five category of, of, the, of the conventional weapons, but this agreement is favored and now situation in Europe going in different di direction. This country joined to the NATO and now it's not relevant. Uh, the specificity of this agreement is that we have, uh, we have some formats in the implementation. Main body for the implementation is not Security Council, to which high representative submi submitting reports every six months, but it is Peace Implementation Council. Peace Implementation Council established in 1996 and it seems that it represents the concept of the coalition of the willing of the interesting states could be joined together uh, uh, to, to, uh, to regulate and to managing the peace. And the uh, peace Im steering board of Peace Implementation Council meeting several times a year and on the level of political directors but much more times on the level of ambassador I in Sarajevo. And that body are, decis uh, are making all relevant decisions. In the Security Council, we only listening to the speeches. There is no any action, any ou outcome documents. It's really raising awareness of the, of the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but all decision is on the P Peace Implementation Council. The specificity is also that we have a so-called contact group in Bosnia. Contact group was at the time when, Bosn when there was a conflict in Bosnia. It composed of the uh, permanent member of the Security Council minus China. It seems France, UK, US, and Russia plus uh, Italy and Germany and plus European country which are member of the non elected member of the Security Council plus European Union and those body 
are proposing the, the uh, resolution in the Security Council in Bosnia. And we have the situation that I we are extending mandate of the Air Force mission in Bosnia every November, and those group of friends draft resolution and just convey to the Security Council and Security Council adopting. Sometimes there is objections of the country that they would like to engage in the, I in the discussion, but in many situations uh, this uh, resolution is adopted very easily because we are, we are uh, for this resolution we would like uh, that, uh, that uh, Euro Air Force mission would be Bosnia, it providing the peace, and this resolution is practically changing only in the preambula part. Preambula part is just update of the political situation and operative part of such resolution, which is the essence of the extending mandate, is the, is the, the same for, for the years. Uh, Key, key question of the implementation of the peace agreement is where are we now? What is next? What we will do? Uh, in that context, Peace Implementation Council in 2007 uh, adopted a strategy for the closing of OHR, for the closing international presence in Bosnia with the fulfillment of two conditions and five objectives. And of course, Bosnia and Herzegovina implemented all, but this last condition is that security situation in Bosnia could be satisfactory for the leading the country. And the country in the steering board assessing that overall and uh, security situation in Bosnia is not satisfactory and uh, mandate and the international presence in Bosnia are continuing. The presence is based on the chapter 7. That means that situation in Bosnia represents uh, threat to peace and security, international peace and security, but the, the job of the, uh, of the Air Force mission complete, uh, uh, changed completely. In the first fa phase, the job was to provide free <coughs> and safe security environment, freedom of the passage, deterrence from attack of the neighboring or other country. But in this time, the job of the, of the Air Force mission is to provide assistance, to provide uh, advising of the military forces of Bosnia, and this mission has only several hundreds of the people mostly engaged in the reconnaissance observation and, uh, and it is uh, rely on over horizon forces if something would be wrong maybe the forces from other country could be transported to Bosnia to intervene. But I could, I could tell you that for the years in Bosnia nobody was killed, nobody was attacked. There is only several injuries or several casualty in the traffic accidents. So in this we are no <laughs> we are peaceful nations. We are not <laughs> so much aggressive as it was in the war. Uh, and uh, I spoke a, lo a lot in the security aspect. With the civilian aspect, I will also uh, add two important points in the, in the Dayton Agreement. Uh, the important is Annex 7. It is return of the refugees and the uh, uh, agency which was obliged uh, to help us was uh, United Nations Commission for Refuge, uh, Commissariat for Refugees and uh, we, this uh, uh, Annex is based on the best practice and our strategy for refru return of <coughs> refugees was based on the return of the property. And we returned the property for practically everybody. More than 99% 90, of the property is, is returned. Uh, but refugee didn't return. And what was the problem? 
And we are now in the implementation of this understand that lesson from Bosnia is that we need self-sustainable return. If you allow for the people to return without job, without health insurance, without pensions, it's very, very limited. And there is also threat, there is also I I I irrational threats from the others, and so the return of refugees was not what we expected. So many ethnic homogenization of the state remain until now. The second aspect, other than security aspect, is the, is the fight against impunity. And there is no too much stipulation in the agreement. There is also several references saying that we are obliged for the cooperation with the International Tribunal, Tribunal for Former Yugoslavia. International Tribunal, Tribunal for Former Yugoslavia are closing mandate and uh, uh, the last session was in December and now it would be the residual mechanism. But there is many perpetrators which, which was not punished. And not only perpetrators but also the big fish, those who are organized, who engage in the organizing. And we, to address it, we have a strategy for war crimes and we have a lot of support of the European Union and other friends in building and supporting our judiciary system uh, to complete this very important job. And this is fight against impunity is very, very important for multinational style country. And without this, I think that it, we will not uh, preserve s uh, long-term stability in the country. Because in the multi-ethnic country, we have to punish everybody regardless of their national or religious origin. It's related also to the perpetrators or, or to the victims. And on that way, to provide more confidence amongst the people which would be based for national reconciliation, which is main main task of, of, of the prosecuting for war crimes. Uh, <coughs> just return again for the mandate. There is no now uh, single view or consensus in Bosnia on the international presence, but many things that we become member of the European Union, that military presence would be not logical things with that. For the European Union to have the country which is represent threat to international peace and security, and we hope that in the process of integration that uh, security issue and all many of the threats which is rational, some is irrational, will be addressed and that would be provide opportunity finally to precondition uh, for Bosnia to be one normal country like all others. That's that's all what I would like to say about the implementation of the peace agreement. I will now uh, continue with the uh, foreign politics of Bosnia. Again, I will start with uh, Dayton Agod. Dayton Agod provide that responsibility for the foreign policy is not on the government, but on the presidency. And the Ministry for Foreign Affairs is just a uh, uh, operational conducting foreign policy what, what presidency conducted. And we in the practice have situation that presidency are deciding about our vote in the General Assembly, about support for some country to be in the election of the Security Council and many other issues. And the presidency is uh, much more stronger body in Bosnia than in uh, other European country, which is much more responsibility on the government. With the uh, general 
talking about general concept of the policy, the practice, there is a lot of practice among the European country that foreign policy concept would be agreed by the ruling coalition after election. It's not, it's not the, the example which, is, which was implemented everywhere. Uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we, we have the practice that presidency are uh, adopting policy paper in, in which they are uh, drafting foreign policy priority. And we have last, uh, last policy paper was drafted in 1993 and we have a clear uh, 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 priority of foreign policy, although we, there is a need for some updating audit. And in this, or in this paper, first priority of foreign policy is integration of Bosnia and Herzegovina into European Union. And I would like to say perception uh, from Bosnia in regard to that. Uh, many polls said that majority of each nation is for the membership of the European Union. Majority of the Bosniaks, of the Serbs, of the Croats, everybody is for the membership of the European Union because we think we belong to the Europe for the Western world, not only geographically, but culturally, historically, and we would like to be a member of the European Union. And uh, this desire is not based <coughs> only as many in the Brussels institutions think that some country would like to be a member of the European Union for only for their interests, for better life. From Bosnia perspective, we think that uh, membership of the European Union w would provide to us security. For us, European Union is not issue of better life, but primarily it is the issue of providing security because if all country in the Western Balkans would become member of some wider regional association, it would be very good strategy for preventing the war. Uh, we, uh, in the history of our relation in, with the European Union, I will tell you only a few things. It is starting with 2003 when the European Union uh, make commitment that uh, will receive all the country, integrate all the country in the Western Balkans in the, in the membership. In 2007, Bosnia and Herzegovina signed stabilization and association agreement. And uh, before, and last year, we submit officially application. And uh, before last week, uh, the representative from the European Union uh, received questionnaire for Bosnia. And we now expecting the positive assessment of the European Commission of, of our preparedness for the, for the negotiation. A negotiation would last maybe six, seven years, no. I think, six years we have experience of Bulgaria, Romania, and other country. In this process, we will, uh, the main task of this process is, is the a key, is change the legal system, and we counted that we will have to adopt at least 40, 400 new law and completely uh, adapt our political, economical, and social system with the European Union. The strategy of the European Union toward Bosnia a little bit changed. In the first time, there is much more political conditionality, much more conditions for Bosnia to fulfill, to allow next steps in the integration. But now, European Union decide to put social and economical issue and the first time and the standard and a little bit late with, with the political conditions. And for the Brussels institution, uh, very important thing was to provide uh, decision-making mechanism in Bosnia. They say we, we have to be secure that we will not wait you for one month, for two months uh, until you agree on some decision. Not we, we need that you would be able to pass decision very quickly. 
and we adopt uh, 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 coordination mechanism and solve this very important issue. With regard to other, other priority, it is first it is uh, relation with the neighboring country. There is a lot of open issue, a lot of rhetorics, but uh, the relation is steadily improving. We have a regular practice of regular meeting of our head of states and uh, I think yesterday or today is meeting in the Mostar in Bosnia and Herzegovina between the president of Croatia, Serbia and presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina and they would discuss, they would meet not only for the courtoisie, they would discuss some open issue as the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, defining the border between the country and other issue which is remained. And uh, also, at the end, there is more priority. I will, I will just a add that we are implementing membership action plan for the NATO, and everybody is for the good and friendly relation with the NATO. And we have the office in the NATO in Sarajevo, and we are implementing this uh, membership o action plan, although decision, although the decision for the membership of the NATO is not uh, done yet. It is the, at the competency of the presidency. And now I will turn to the major issue. It is relation with Bosnia with the UN. In explaining this, I will conditionally uh, divide all that issue in three levels. First level is relation between the, but relation uh, between the Bosnia and Herzegovina and the UN are very complex, very rich, there is a lot of activity. In the first level is the level when Bosnia and Herzegovina is not object, is not subject, but object of the, of the, of the relation and where uh, United Nations is conflict managing organization. And in the, we gain a membership of the UN on 22nd of January 1992, and during the war, Security Council and GEA adopt many resolution and decision about the Bosnia. And uh, after the war, uh, the Bosnia was classified uh, in the UN I as a uh, post-conflict country in the reconstruction. And in the 2003, I think that uh, World Bank uh, declassified Bosnia, decided that Bosnia is not any more uh, country uh, in the f face of post-conflict re reconstruction, but m mostly moved to the development. And that is some, uh, tra some turning point in the relation between Bosnia and Herzegovina in the UN. In the second level is activity of the country team or the mission in Bosnia in the Sarajevo. And we now, uh, we now have a <coughs> agreement of assistance, implementing assistance development program, which is about approximately 50 million dollars a year. It is for a small country, it is a significant uh, contribution and the uh, country team in Bosnia working mostly with the uh, with, uh, supporting, with the uh, fight against poverty, reduction, resistance reduction and implementing and also on the implementing 2030 agenda. Important project uh, which is implementing between Bosnia and Herzegovina in the UN is Dialogue for Future. Uh, this program is launched before several years. It is the, in the competency of the presidency of Bosnia. And this program, the aim of this program is to promote uh, peace, coexistence and dialogue between all components in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And third level is activity in the Bosnia and Herzegovina as a member of the European Union and as a 
and and where we are the implementing our our obligation. Uh, our uh, the there is no any paper which stipulate priority, but I summarize by the practice full priority of uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina in working in the UN. First is uh, uh, pro pro peace and security. We think that we have a very rich historical experience and uh, multi-ethnic multi -ethnic spirit and country which provide us to better understanding of the international conflict and by which we could contribute in the discussion for the solving international conflict. And when we me were a member of the Security Council in 2011, we proposed presidential statement and organized debate of the institution building. It is based on our experience that in the country after the conflict, the building good and efficient I institution is the best strategy for the consolidating peace. The second area in the peace and security is fight against terrorism. We are participating in the debate. In the we are also part of the anti-terrorist coalition and we attach a lot of importance to it. And last topic on the security is our part participation in peacekeeping <coughs> mission. We have now small contribution. It is about 40 individuals, 4-0. But in compare with the other country, we are average. It's not less than other country. Maybe we have more. And uh, now we would like to increase it. But it's not easy. Everybody say, yeah, it's OK. We would like to increase. But how to do it, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Because the peacekeeping change and the conflict is change. And Department of Peacekeeping o Operation assessing that in the last 20 years, they solved many conflicts. But it, what is remain is the main stubborn, the main dangerous conflict which is remain. And in the peacekeeping operation, in this conflict, we need civilian expert. We need uh, very specialized people, which is not easy to find. We we need uh, we need resources and time for the education and so. And uh, but we are working to increase the number. And uh, I think that uh, European Union won a little bit to the Europe that Europe has only 4% of the contribution and peacekeeping. And we now think that our region could, could correct this uh, contribution of the Europe. And uh, in my term, mandate, my term in the New York, I was followed by the idea to form one infantry unit of the police from Bosnia to be employed somewhere in the world. And uh, we work on it, uh, and uh, this job is not finished yet. We, the job was to create a roster of the persons. Everybody could uh, pass the examination and test. And our disadvantage, I would like to say so, is the language knowledge, because uh, in the DPKO are uh, mostly asking for French speaking. We have a lot of English-speaking people, but there is many, uh, many peacekeeping operation in French-speaking area, and also what they are need more participation of the women. And I think we are not, not bad on it. Could I? <laughs> <laughs> is my time expired? Yeah, and uh, just I mentioned uh, two other priority is respect of the international law and human rights, and co continuity of the membership of the 
of the UN body and we attach a lot of importance to this and in our history with the UN we participate in the, the most important body of all three pillars in the UN. We were a member of the Security Council, we were a member of the United Nations Commission for Human Rights, we were a member of the ECOSOC, we, mem we were a member of the Peace Building Commission, and we now member of the Executive Board of the UNICEF and Commission of the Status of the Women. And I will conclude by the last priority in the UN and last priority is the build new image of Bosnia and Herzegovina as a country which is uh, dedicated to the democracy, plural economy, um, plural political system and market economy which uh, belong to the West. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it is a very complex issue which couldn't be solved for a short period of time. I'm optimistic and this issue is connected to the overall politics. For addressing this issue, we need a good judiciary. We need a good professional and efficient courts and prosecutor office which is not easy to achieve, especially in the country in the transition from the socialist system to the, uh, to the free, free world system. And uh, frankly speaking, we have uh, the process of the transition or reform of the judiciary is not satisfactory what we would like to do. And uh, I am optimistic. I, I have no right to be pessimistic as ambassador. At this time, I would like to present uh, Mr. Ambassador um, just a talking of gratitude for your participation here at Utah Valley University. And since you are now a, um, a lecturer at our campus, now I'm, I'm honored to present on behalf of Utah Valley University in Academic Affairs. The, uh, the recognition as an honor professor of our institution. And with yeah, that, just a you. talking of thank you. I'm not, not, I don't know if I'm deserved. <laughs> <laughs> a small talking here for you. It's for you uh, to remember your, your okay. time here at Utah Valley University. Thank you very much. So, thank um, you. Maybe <laughs> picture. <laughs> yeah. 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 Unfortunately, now we'll probably have to uh, run real quick to the library because we'll begin the event in 20 minutes or 25 minutes. So, thank, thank you, you again, thank Mr. you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, all of you, for attending, and uh, please continue to join us.